Hi guys, uh, welcome to my uh, little review of the Minolta X300 35mm film camera. I uh, decided to do a little video review of this camera because I couldn't see many reviews of it on the internet so I thought I'll do my own little review of it and uh, stick it up on YouTube for people to have a look at. So, let's talk about the little camera a bit first of all. The Minolta X300, it's a 35mm aperture priority and manual film camera. Not digital, uses good old 35mm film. Uh, there's been a bit of a resurgence in interest in film recently. And uh, a lot of people now are turning to film to give it a go. Maybe haven't been brought up on digital cameras and they find uh, film to be quite an interesting alternative. So, as I say, this is a 35mm film camera. Aperture priority and manual. The camera itself was uh, first manufactured about 1984, I think. Um, there's been a few variants of it. Uh, this was the, I think, the first and the best version of Minolta X300. It was uh, manufactured in Japan, so it's uh, very well made. A nicely made camera, as you can see when you look around it. Everything uh, is well made. There's no sort of nasty cheap bits on it. There were later uh, versions of this camera. Uh, some later on were subcontracted and made in China under different names like the uh, Seagull uh, DF300 or the Centon DF300 uh, and to my mind they weren't as good a camera as the original X300 uh, the quality, build quality just wasn't as good so if you're thinking of buying this camera look out for the Minolta logo on the front and make sure it's the Minolta X300 you're buying and not the uh, Chinese made uh, derivatives which uh, to my mind just weren't as well, well, well made as the original version. So let's have a, a little look around the camera. On the top plate, if we can start there, you can see here uh, to the right hand side we have the wind on lever operated like that. You then have your shutter release button which is a touch operated uh, button. Quite an innovative uh, feature from Minolta. I'm not that terribly keen on it myself. What the button does is it activates the metering and the viewfinder just by simply touching it with your finger. Uh, which is fine as long as you're not wearing gloves or uh, Sometimes, if you don't actually touch it properly with the, the full pad of your finger, it doesn't work too well. So I would actually prefer a button where you just uh, put half pressure on it to activate the metering. But as I say, the Minolta in this case has a touch sensitive button which re relies on your finger actually making an electrical contact across the button to activate the metering on the camera. But that's the shutter release button there. Beside it you have a window and in that window you'll see it currently displayed it says auto. Uh, that means the camera is currently in aperture priority automatic mode. Uh, you can switch it off the automatic mode by using this serrated dial which uh, is directly underneath the shutter button. If you move that it will take it off auto, aperture priority auto, and will display a manually selected shutter speed in the window. As you can see there, it's on auto. If you move that serrated uh, control, 
you can now see one one thousandth of a second displayed in the windows which is a manually selected shutter speed. It goes from one one thousandth of a second uh, right down to one second uh, in uh, manual mode and you also have a B for bulb uh, selection where if you press the shutter speed button the shutter will stay open until you release your uh, finger from the button again so very good for the long exposure shots obviously if you want to do long exposures uh, it's good to have that B setting you'll see uh, 1 60th of a second is highlighted in red now uh, that's the maximum uh, sync speed of the flash in this camera uh, if you're using a flash in the hot shoe of this camera uh, it's important to remember that you can't use the flash above 1 60th of a second uh, because the flash won't synchronize properly so it's worth remembering uh, that 1 60th is the maximum sync speed of the flash and that's why it's highlighted in red there on the shutter speed dial so put it back on the aperture prime or the auto a minute if we look at the flash hot shoe you'll see as well as the center uh, uh, pin there there's also a small uh, dedicated pin there beside it uh, if you use a Minolta dedicated flash what that will do is uh, it will give you a flash ready uh, indicator in the viewfinder when the flash is fully charged other than that uh, the flash is not through the lens on this camera it doesn't use through the lens flash it's just simply uh, uh, the older type uh, computer operated flash and it doesn't have through the lens capability the other uh, Minolta X700 uh, camera does have through the lens flash but this one the X300 doesn't have through the lens flash so just worth remembering that on the uh, top lever again you'll see a switch on the top lever uh, to operate the camera you need to slide that switch forward so the switch now says on a little green on so the camera metering is now activated and the camera is uh, currently set to aperture priority mode uh, because it says auto in the little window over there so the camera switched on and is ready to operate. Uh, and just a note on that, this camera is entirely electronic. It uses uh, two silver oxide batteries. Uh, without batteries in this camera it simply will not operate. There are no, there's no mechanical uh, capability in this uh, camera. The camera requires batteries in order to operate. So if you pick one up and you think, oh dear, the camera's dead, it's worth checking that it has fresh batteries in it because if the batteries are dead or expired the camera won't operate. Um, the batteries are contained on the bottom plate. You'll see a little uh, coin operated uh, cover here. Simply remove that and you can pop two silver oxide SR44s are the best batteries to put in it. Uh, you can use LR44s but they don't last as long as this SR44 variants. Uh, while we're on the bottom plate you can see here beside the battery compartment there's also a standard tripod socket for setting the camera up on a tripod if you want. There's also contacts for a either a motor wind or a motor drive. Uh, the winder will operate up to two frames per second. You can get a Minolta motor drive, which will also fit on this camera, operate up to three and a half seconds, uh, frames a second, if you so desire. Uh, again, there's the electrical contacts for the uh, motor wind and power drive there as well. Uh, also on the bottom plate, you'll see the little uh, film rewind lever, uh, or button release button, more accurately, I should say. Uh, to rewind the film you need to first depress that little button it locks into place you then come up to the top plate on your camera flip up the little rewind lever you can now 
rewind your film in a clockwise manner uh, manually rewind your film back into the cassette ready for you to unload the film uh, in order to unload the film what you next do is you simply pull up on this little uh, lever which will release the rewind crank give it a little pull up the film back will now spring open you can open up your camera back and uh, take out your film cassette it will be rewound back onto the cassette at that point now, to load the film you simply put in your 35mm uh, canister on that side um, make sure that uh, this uh, rewind crank is pulled up which will allow you to put the film canister in there push that down now bring your film leader across and hook it in there on the over the sprocket and into the little uh, recess there. Close up your camera back. Uh, wind the camera on a couple of frames. Uh, I'm going to switch on. There we go. Wind it on about two frames, and you're ready to go. The film speed, the film uh, frame counter is there, and will be set at number one. Uh, giving you an indication of uh, how many shots you have taken. So, again, as I say, uh, also on the top plate, uh, you know, before you shoot with uh, any film, you're going to have to manually set the film speed on this camera. The camera's not DX coded, it doesn't automatically set the film speed. So depending on what film speed you happen to be using, say you're using uh, a 200 ISO uh, print film, then you'll have to set 200 ISO in that little window there. You can see it there to make sure the film speed is correctly set. If for instance you're using say a 400 uh, ISO film, in order to change that value there's a little button there, as you can see beside the rewind crank. You simply push that down, it's spring loaded, hold it down and then operate the lever, the uh, little dial, and you can see the film speed value will change in the window. So if I move it to there, it's now set at 400 ISO, and I release that little button, spring loaded button, and it's locked in place so the, uh, the, uh, the it will no longer rotate and uh, you can't uh, uh, inadvertently uh, change the film speed setting it's locked in place with that little spring loaded button there so that's how to change your film speed setting that's your on off switch for the camera to switch on, uh, the camera on and off it switches the metering on and off the metering on this camera in the viewfinder is uh, LED uh, metering. What you get running down the right hand side is a list of your shutter speeds and uh, the highlighted speed will be marked with a little red uh, notch beside the shutter speed uh, to show which uh, shutter speed the camera has selected depending on what aperture you happen to set the camera to. Um, on the lens here you'll see the aperture values on the uh, lens there. You can change that. This particular lens runs from f3.5 down to f22. It's a Minolta lens. Uh, this particular one is a 2870. It's a Minolta MD or MC fitting is what uh, the camera takes. So if you're buying uh, extra lenses for this camera, bear that in mind. It takes Minolta manual focus lenses. Uh, either MD or MC series lenses will fit this camera. Uh, to change the lens, uh, you will see here on this side of the lens throat there's two sort of uh, buttons here the top button is the lens release button to in order to release the lens 
what we do is we press in that top button and rotate the lens counterclockwise about a quarter to half a turn and uh, the lens will release. Uh, when to refit the lens you'll see it marked on the lens there will be a red button as you can see the red button there the red dot rather what you do is you realign that red dot with a similar red dot on the camera throat there you can see it up at the top there's a red dot so we align these two red dots together and then turn the camera clockwise this time and you'll hear it click into place so that's the camera lens locked into place it takes a wide range of uh, lenses uh, Minolta made quite a, a variety and, uh, of lenses for the Minolta it's a good uh, system camera to have they range from everything, wide angles, fish eyes standard lenses, uh, telephotos, you name it Minolta have an excellent range and uh, very respectable optically as well are the Minolta lenses but as I say if you're buying them just remember to get them in the MD or MC fitting uh, Minolta MD or MC fitting lens uh, as I say this one you can see the zoom ring here is set to 28 millimeters I can zoom in to 70 millimeters and I'll go beyond that to a macro setting, a 1 to 4 macro setting uh, which will give you fairly close focus with this lens, uh, particular lens. Quite a nice little lens uh, optically, not too bad. Maybe not the sharpest optic ever, but uh, certainly a good performer uh, if you stop it down, maybe a stop or so. It uh, might be a little bit soft in the edges like a lot of zoom lenses are. But a uh, pretty good lens and a good uh, sort of standard lens to have. Covers just about everything from landscape to uh, portrait with the 28 to 70 millimeter setting on it. So a good choice for an out and about general type lens. Uh, great little camera. To operate it, as I say, you simply cock the shutter. Uh, make sure the camera's switched on into auto aperture priority mode your little button is forward and it's reading on camera you now touch the shutter button you can see what exposure value the camera is setting on the viewfinder it will give you a readout on the uh, LED to show what shutter speed the camera is setting uh, depending on what aperture you've chosen obviously the, the bigger the number smaller the aperture the slower the shutter speed you will get uh, the more you open up the aperture uh, then the higher the shutter speed you will get uh, so it will give you an indication before you take the photograph in the viewfinder what shutter speed the camera is setting always important to remember not to set too slow a shutter speed or you will uh, get blur in your photographs so just check that before you take an image in order to take an image, you simply uh, press carefully down on the shutter button and away it goes. The camera will, uh, so to say, take a picture uh, automatically uh, in aperture priority mode. Uh, say the more you shut down or the darker the subject, then the slower the shutter speed will become. So if I was to turn the camera away towards a, a dark uh, subject, you'll see the camera will automatically set a slow shutter speed. If I put my hand in front of the lens here and press the button, you can hear that, that the shutter was a lot slower that time uh, because it was setting a slower shutter speed to compensate for the lack of light. So aperture priority and manual. You can set the shutter speed and aperture manually. It will still give you a readout on the viewfinder of what the camera wants you to set. Uh, but uh, you're entirely free to set whatever exposure you want by uh, manually uh, using the shutter speeds in the, view, in the little window there and the aperture. 
you can use a separate handheld meter if you want rather than trusting the camera's auto exposure. But I found the auto exposure in this uh, uses cinder weighted metering, uh, fairly accurate. So if you set it on auto uh, and uh, pick your aperture, the camera will take the photograph and it will be exposed pretty well uh, accurately. Again, back down to this side again, I've already mentioned the lens release button. Below that you can see what looks like a PC socket for flash, but it actually isn't. Uh, what that is, is it takes a cable release, a standard screw-in cable release. You can screw it in there for uh, long exposures on your camera if you was to take a long exposure. So that's what that is. Just remember that. Don't try to stick a PC lead in there because that's not what it is. The camera doesn't have a PC lead for flash. Uh, that's a cable release uh, socket there. Around the right hand side of the camera you can see on here uh, it's there's a button on the front of the camera below directly below where it says X300 and beside that button there are two markings uh, one says ST and the one below it says AEL now what that is is it's the self timer this button if you pull it up with your fingernail it locks up and that is the camera set ready to use the self timer so if you now cock the camera and press the button what will happen is you'll see the red LED flashing there so the camera is counting down uh, about 15 seconds for a self timer shot uh, there it goes and uh, again this button has a dual purpose because if you wish to lock the exposure that's what the AEL stands for auto exposure lock uh, if you wish to lock the exposure in tricky lighting conditions, say when something's strongly backlit or whatever, if you then hold that button down, it's spring-loaded, if you release it it'll pop back up again, but if you hold that button down, having taken a meter reading from an average uh, scene, that will lock that exposure in place, so that if you're pointing at something that's strongly backlit, it won't be, uh, uh, your shot won't be overexposed. Uh, so if you hold that button down, your exposure is locked, you can then press your shutter release button and uh, again, that's a useful feature. It doesn't actually have exposure compensation as such, but it does have exposure lock by using that little button on the front. Simply holding it down, your exposure is locked in place. Okay. So on the back you can see there's a little badge there, you can put a little, the little uh, if you tear the little uh, bit off your uh, film canister you can slide it in there to remind you what speed of film you have in the camera. It shows you the ASA and DIN equivalent settings there, so if you're in any doubt uh, what uh, film speed you're using, the 200 for instance, that's 24 DIN. Uh, 400 is 27 DIN, so just in case you're ever in any doubt what kind, what speed of film you're using in your camera. Uh, the, the film speed itself runs from about uh, 16 ISO up to 3200 ISO, so quite a broad range there for the type of uh, film that you can use in this camera. Uh, the metering will cope with uh, a broad range of film speeds. So, a good little camera, very well made, uh, if you're wondering what that little window was there, uh, that's just uh, when as your film advances there's a little red line goes across there to show you how far on the film is. Uh, don't really use that much but it's there anyway. Uh, and obviously you have your little uh, film uh, exposure counter window there. Counts how many exposures you've used in your camera, how many you've left, depending on whether you're using a 24 or 36 exposure film. So really nice, well made little camera, aperture priority and manual exposure. Uh, doesn't have through the lens flash, uh, it does have dedicated flash and that it'll show you uh, uh, when the flash is ready in the viewfinder if you use them and hold a dedicated flash in it. Uh, but uh, just remember it doesn't have the more sophisticated through the lens flash, it's just uh, it's a more simple computer flash which you have to 
set the exposure on the flash uh, beforehand. Uh, well made camera. It comes in two variants. This is the uh, chrome version here, which is uh, very nice, but it also comes in a black variant as well. Uh, this is the black version here. Exactly the same camera, uh, but in a rather nice black finish. Uh, as you can see, both cameras, you can pick them up uh, fairly cheaply on eBay, uh, body only. Uh, I think I bought these pair for something around, well, I think it was about 15 to, I think the most I paid for the body was £25, but that's pretty typical actually for the body only. Of course if you buy one with a lens it's going to cost you more, but as I say, if you pick up a body you can uh, buy the lens, it's fairly cheap as well, any of the Minolta MD or MC series uh, manual focus lenses, uh, buy whichever ones you want, uh, you can build up quite a range of them. But uh, again, uh, very nice little cameras, well made, I love them to bits because they're so simple to operate, nothing complicated with them, just I use it in aperture priority mode all the time, pick my aperture, camera matches it to the shutter speed, have a quick check in the viewfinder before you take the picture to make sure you're not setting too slow a shutter speed, if it is open the aperture up a bit and the shutter speed will come up to compensate. So simple little cameras to use, great for anybody who's uh, taken an interest in 35mm film photography uh, and a great starter camera which I can thoroughly recommend, the Minolta X300. Hope you enjoyed my little video.